Ow! Tent Puppophobia. If you happen to have Puppophobia, then FNAF 2 is going to be hell. With the mechanic added of winding the music box, you will constantly have to keep looking at your worst fear. Puppophobia, as I'm sure you can tell, is the fear of puppets. And considering how there is also a minigame revolving around the puppet jump scare, I'm sure you can see why FNAF would trigger this fairly common phobia. The main triggers, of course, being the puppet, or perhaps even the mini arenas from Sister Location. I mean, they're essentially just smaller versions of the puppet. But with tutus, so I mean, like, it's not that much of a stretch. And don't even get me started on how bad Nightmare and from the FNAF 4 Halloween expansion would be. While yes, puppets would be scary, a puppet intentionally designed to kill you using the exact same mechanics as Nightmare, by far the scariest animatronic from that game, well, you'll just be screwed at that point, won't you? And denying chromophobia. Chromophobia is the fear of colors, and while yes, colors are everywhere, they're very present in the FNAF series. I mean, there was a whole debate based on if purple guy and pink guy were the same person. Plus, text colors end up becoming very important later on, indicating to us who is speaking, and not to mention the things that are literally coming at you are colorful as well. Unless you play Night 5 of FNAF 1 in, in Help Wanted which does make everything black and white. Colors ended up becoming such an important part of the game, people were legit fighting over it. People became indicated by their color. Purple guy, mustard man, hell, we even figured out that Elizabeth Afton possessed baby by the shift in eye color, since baby's eyes were blue, but switched to green when Elizabeth takes over because her eyes were green. Color became so important it would surely terrify anyone with chromophobia. And you won't have to worry about that for me because I'm pasty as hell. And then electrophobia. Some people say Chica is sexy, and I mean, y'all can like whatever you wanna like, even if it is highly disturbing, but the fact that there is a legit main character based on a chicken doesn't help those with electrophobia, which is the fear of chickens. Unless people are able to convince themselves that she is a duck, supposedly also a fear that a duck is always watching you. Kentucky will no doubt be the scariest part of this game franchise. I honestly don't know if Nightmare Chica would be any better or worse in this scenario. I mean, she does indeed look like a chicken, but she is specifically designed to be more nightmarish than the others, so only those with this phobia could really know. And if you have this fear, please tell me in the comments which version of Chica is scarier. And is, is Mermaid Chica scary to you? Because it's technically a mermaid, and but it's also a chicken. It's I don't know the rules with this sort of thing. <laughs> and it's seven, claustrophobia. Now, being stuck in small spaces can sometimes get worrying to anyone, but to those with claustrophobia, especially severe cases, the mere thought of it can render you catatonic. And in this game, there are no shortage of small enclosed spaces, like the vents, which we have to go into literally at the beginning of the game, the slide and various other areas in the daycare as well, not to mention the recharge stations, which you need to get in multiple times throughout the story, plus, you literally hide inside an animatronic stomach for a decent amount of the game. So needless to say, there are a lot of small spaces, but my question is does this actually trigger claustrophobia? Or is it more of a like, since you're not in those spaces, you're fine in like your living room or wherever your computer is since it's open? And since you're seeing out of Freddy's eyes when you actually get inside of him, does, does that trigger it because you know your character is inside his 14 inch tall stomach? Or not because it's just a game or because you're looking through his eyes? Please let me know in the comments, I'm, I'm genuinely curious and I'm I'm genuinely curious about all of these. I'm not curious enough to f try to figure out how to spell genuinely correctly, but I am actually very curious about the phobias, just not about how to spell genuinely. <laughs> Six, chlorophobia. While sister location may be best for those with a fear of chickens, since Chica isn't present, those with chlorophobia will end up hating themselves for playing. Chlorophobia is the crippling fear of clowns, much like the fear that Sam Winchester and his linebacker shoulders has. With the whole sister location crew basically being clowns, I'm sure anyone who loaded this game would actually beg for the sweet, merciful release of death. Not in game, obviously, because that involves getting jump scared by a clown. And even Ennard, who is in my opinion one of the creepiest animatronics now, who only has a clown face, would still scare the pants off any Anyone who decides to play Sister Location because it was the start of a new story, if you consider the fact that FNAF 4 was described as the final chapter of the original story. Halfway through it at number 5, Decidophobia. I think it's fairly obvious what fear this is thanks to my pronunciation of it, but yes, decidophobia is the fear of making decisions. And considering that this is a game with multiple decisions, you'll be in hell during very important parts of the game. Do you investigate Phaser Blast or Monty Golf? Do you take down Sheikah or Monty? Do you stay and try to end the disappearances or do you leave? Do you go confront Vanny or do you literally go anywhere else in order to get different endings? Hell, you even need to make a decision on how you escape the first time which all 
ultimately ends up failing. As soon as you get to the main atrium, you have to make a decision. Like this game is full of decisions and it's the first FNAF game to really do that. So if you were expecting a similar experience to the other FNAF games, then we're all of a sudden hit with like 15 different choices, I'm sorry. <laughs> but seemingly every girl I've dated also has this fear. Like, never making any decisions. Like, where do you want to eat? I don't know. Anywhere. Okay, well, how about here? No. Okay, well, then you decide. Oh, I don't care. It's like every female on the planet has the fear of making decisions. If, the minute I find a woman who's comfortable actually, like, picking somewhere to eat, that's gonna be my soulmate. <laughs> At this point, the bar is very low. And for Zootopia. You thought Zootopia was a clever name because all the animals were living in a utopia? Well, it could have been a pun referring to the irrational fear of animals known as zoophobia, since in the movie, all animals are afraid of the predators being feral again or whatever. I saw part of it once. Well, almost every single animatronic having anything to do with these Five Nights at Freddy's series, with the exception of a few from Sister Location and FNAF 2, are anthropomorphized versions of animals. Bonnie the Bunny, Chica the Chicken, Freddy Fazbear, Foxy, it's right in the name, Mangles, just another version of Foxy, Springtrap is a Golden Bonnie, Dreadbear is just a Frankenstein bear. Almost every individual animatronic has some form of animalistic feature about them. And to anyone with zoophobia, that is one hell of a nope. Plus, the nightmare forms of these animatronics can be even worse, especially when in FNAF 4 you need to get really close to Foxy to send it away. And in the Curse of Dreadbear DLC, you need to deal with all the nightmare main cast in the hallway minigame, where you need to directly confront them since you need to make as much progress as you can quickly. And don't even get me started on how bad the corn maze or dark rooms must be with Nightmare Fredbear, man. Oh. And to Necrophobia. Phobia. Okay, I'm saying necrophobia. As in fear of death or dead things. And considering how this series is piled high with underage corpses and death and allergies like no other series, if you're scared of death or the concept of it, you're probably in for one wild ride. With representations of death like Nightmare and Nightmare Annette, plus the literal addition of a new dead kid every game, death is everywhere in the Five Nights at Freddy's series, and if you were to play the FNAF VR version, you would end up getting killed up close, or even end up seeing graves. When you get over in the game's DLC, you will drop one in your pants faster than me, figuring out that I need to look at Bonnie's left, not mine. Yes, it happened, and I even said that I realized it in the text in the video. I was like, yeah, I figured out that it was the wrong eye. But you guys were still commenting about it like I didn't know in the comments, and there was that one person who was very rude about it. And I didn't realize people would be so mad about it, like come on, I found it hilarious after the fact. I think y'all just need to chill. Take a pill, watch people fail, and laugh about it. No need to spread rude comments about how stupid I am. I know I'm stupid, it's part of my charm. Finally, in a number one, Automatophobia. This is literally the phobia this game was made for. Sure, it wasn't actually the reason it was made, but seriously, this is the perfect fear for these games. While sure, the thought of mannequins can creep anyone out, especially if you're being brought to life in a cheesy movie where they fall in love with the main protagonist and everyone judges him for it. But the fact that automatonophobia is literally the fear of animatronics is surely the bread and butter of this series. Well, it's more of a fear of human-like figures, like wax figures and mannequins as I mentioned, or things like that, but animatronics that are anthropomorphized versions of animals is surely enough to trigger this phobia, especially when they're trying to freaking kill you. Plus, I looked it up and the fear of animatronics really started shooting up in August of 2014, when the first FNAF game was released, along with searches for animatronics and ways to stop being scared of animatronics. So these games even made people afraid of animatronics when they weren't before, or at least they didn't know it or acknowledged it beforehand. Gotta hand it to Scott, he did a very good job. I for one can never look Chuck E. Cheese in the eyes again. And 7. Kokorhafiophobia Unless you are instantly a pro at power management and strategy, you will fail at least one of these nights. Whether it's due to your power running out or you forgetting to check Foxy, the animatronics will get you at least once in any given playthrough. While the whole build up to your inevitable demise is crazy and definitely one of the scarier parts of the games, the jump scare when you least expect it is the worst. However, if you have Kokorhafiophobia, the fear of failing, you will be even more terrified before and and after the fact. The fear of failing can manifest in multiple different ways, usually associated with an attempt to get someone's approval but never succeeding. However, it ends up putting a real strain on your life in that while, yes, we all want to succeed, failing is okay because we won't collapse to the ground or have a panic attack because of it, unless it's a jump scare from that damn reaper puppet because I can't handle that. And at 6, Entomophobia. 
Now, the fact that the doors open automatically in this game when you're next to them is one thing. It has scared me quite a few times. But for those with entomophobia or the fear of doors, often associated with agoraphobia and claustrophobia, this would be even worse. Now, don't get me wrong, there are plenty of doors in the pizza plex, but there are almost certainly more wheels. Anyway, with the amount of doors in this building that you would also have to go through by walking up to the door, I think that there would be quite a few issues for anyone with entomophobia. I don't quite know how rare this is, however, I feel like it would be quite rare, and I'm not sure how it would develop, but if anyone watching this actually has this fear, like not like jokingly, but like actually does, please let me know in the comments how, how it happened, because, well, at least if you're comfortable sharing that, because like, there are so many doors in the world, but still more wheels, that I, I don't know how you could actually like even handle being afraid of them. It, it's weird, but it's interesting to me in a good way. I'm, I'm just, I'm just a curious person. Okay, but there are still more wheels. Team wheels. Halfway through into number five, ablutophobia. This one I feel is kind of guaranteed, but ablutophobia is the fear of bathing. And I mean, if a leaky ceiling was enough to cause those spring locks to fail, imagine what getting in a bath would do for dear old Willie. I mean, there's not really a point in being scared of it now since you are one with the machine. They've already spring locked, you're already dead, basically, but this man is decaying or has been skinned alive by these robotic parts, so a bath would be very appreciated by anyone who has to be in your vicinity, because, you know, it probably smells atrocious. Like, worse than anything that the Bones crew would have had to deal with on that show. Even the Palant stuff, because that was... Yikes. But, I mean, could you blame William for being scared of bathing after getting trapped in an animatronic suit that collapsed because it got a little bit wet? Getting close to the end, and number three, masklophobia. Masklophobia is the fear of masks and costumes, and considering how the main antagonist of the game is a costumed psycho who was introduced in the previous game via their mask, I think that we can, uh, we can all see where this is going. Especially with some endings showcasing that the Vanny character is indeed a costume. This phobia will certainly be triggered if you play Security Breach. Unlike how some of these are iffy, like erythrophobia or arachnophobia, masklophobia is is basically a guarantee. Unless, like I say for all of these, basically the fact that it's on a computer screen makes it not scary, because I could, I could see the reasoning behind that. However, when I see pictures or videos of spiders, even if they're on a computer screen, I still get the heebie-jeebies, so who knows, okay? Vanny is in costume, and if you think about it, technically all the animatronics are in costume since they're casing on an animatronic endoskeleton, but Gregory also hides in Freddy as a disguise, so technically is that a costume? And what about Sun and Moon? Their faces are masks that you're able to collect in game, so does that make you associate their faces with masks, and does that make you hate the daycare attendant even more? I'm so confused. In a 10, erythrophobia. Now, some might consider this a bit of a stretch, but hear me out, okay? The fear of blushing, also known as erythrophobia, could actually be triggered by security breach for a multitude of reasons. Firstly, there are quite a few mods that could trigger this. Some of them I found while looking for mods for security breach, but it's ruined by mods, you know, that video from a couple weeks ago, um, those will, will certainly make you blush and also make you question everything, like why must we exist in this universe? Why is this our timeline? However, even without downloading the mods, I found myself blushing a few times thanks to various moments from the base game. Vanessa interrogating Freddy for one, like I don't know why, but her being sassy made me blush a little bit, what can I say? We like a baddie. Plus, it's like the first actual girl we've seen in the series that wasn't an animatronic or an 8-bit sprite. And at one point, I got stuck in the sauce machine while trying to make a pizza, and I said, oh no, Step Chica, I'm stuck in the sauce machine. I think you can guess where it went from there. So yeah, I, I, I blushed a couple times, at least, okay? And if you're curious uh, and, and, and not too worried, um, the line was, oh no, Step Chica, I'm stuck in the sauce machine. I hope nobody comes and licks sauce out of my ass crack. Uh, then I had to stop because it, it just felt wrong. <laughs> It was the most viewed short on my channel though, so worth it. In at 9, Nomophobia. This may also be a bit of a stretch since you don't have phones in most games, but nomophobia is the fear of being without a phone, or more specifically, without a smartphone. Now in Security Breach, since you're seemingly a four-year-old, or at least the size of one, you understandably don't have a phone. Although, in today's day and age, four-year-olds have 
cell phones. But you also have a fast watch, which is in essence a smart watch, so maybe that's good enough? I don't know. But considering how calling someone in this instance would be the easiest way out of this situation, I think a lack of phone could be triggering those with nomophobia. But again, I don't have this fear, so the lack of phone could possibly be solved by having your phone next to you in real life. I mean, maybe an interesting challenge would be to leave your phone in another room and then try playing this game. So your phobia and your lack of phone would actually make the game scarier. Because honestly, Security Breach kind of needs that since it's not a very frightening game, at least in my opinion. In it ate Dorophobia. No, Dorophobia is not the fear of extremely cringe kids cartoons that get adapted into even cringier live action films. Instead, Dorophobia is the fear of fur, which could be triggered by Security Breach assuming that you think Freddy and Roxy have fur on them like the original animatronics seem to, or at least it was felt, but these do really seem to be more like plastic, like the toy animatronics, which would help you be in the clear for that, but there is still the case of Roxy's hair and Vanny. See, Vanny's suit is made of fabric, which could have a fur-like texture, at least in the minds of some people, and Roxy's hair is just all kinds of confusing. Some fans thought that it was real enough for Gregory to hide inside if the Choose Your Guardian DLC happened, but it also just seems like a, a long triangles of plastic, to me at least it does. It's all a matter of interpretation with this number, which is why it's so high on the list. If it was something like Glitch Trap Suit specifically, I think that the consensus would be that it is slightly furry, because William seems like he'd be into that kind of thing. Um, but also, if you want to take the idea of fear of fur and turn it into a fear of furries, then boom! Vanny, right there, is triggering, okay? And so is Furry's Rage. In its seven, Papaphobia. Papaphobia is one of my all-time favorite fears because it's the name for the fear of the Pope. Yes, the Pope. Like Vatican Big Hat Pope. It wouldn't really explain anything in the series or make much sense. Like there's basically no evidence for it. But William killing people is like one of the biggest sins, right? So such an unholy act and unholy man being scared of the most holy man in existence is kind of logical in my eyes, right? Is it just me? Like, this seems like the most realistic weird fear that he could have. And by weird, I mean something so odd that I want to talk about it. Like the, like the fear of peanut butter being stuck to the roof of your mouth. I love phobias. I don't know why, they're just so interesting. Like the Truman Show, how they fake killed off his father so that Truman would be scared of water and then never leave his island. And it's six, arachnophobia. Arachnophobia is obviously the fear of spiders. However, there aren't really any spider animatronics aside from Ballora's walking and sister location, right? Well, the closest thing that we have to a spider is DJ Music Man, or as I like to call him, Music Man Spider. However, for me at least, he didn't really trigger anything. I'm mildly arachnophobic, so I figured Music Man crawling around on the walls would screw me up, but it, it really didn't. And I don't know if that's because he only has six legs or if he just looks so different to a spider that my brain didn't register it, but to those with severe arachnophobia, this could be an unplayable section. Unless you get a mod that changes DJ Music Man into something else. I, I don't know, okay? Like, I thought that this was going to be a difficult section for me, but it wasn't. Like, maybe it would have been more effective in VR. Like, I'm not scared of Skyrim or Minecraft spiders, but then put me with them in VR and I'll beg for death. Uh, when I was 12, I slept in the basement of my house after I was done watching a movie or something, and I woke up with a spider in my blanket. Like, I stood up, like, started to get ready to fold the blanket and a spider came flying out. So I, I stomped on it, but then I went to tell my dad uh, and he didn't believe me and told me that I was wrong. And since the spider was cold in a freezing basement that it had been dead for a while. So um, thanks dad, you made me think that gaslighting was normal. Man, I'm just realizing how much my dad gaslights people. We're doing number five, Scopophobia. Have you ever felt like someone was watching you? Maybe you caught someone's gaze on the bus, or you think that the bathroom mirror is more than it seems. Well, how about having Scopophobia, fear of being stared at? If you are brought to your knees by a slightly longer look than normal, you probably are going to hate the fact that literally all these characters do is stare at you. They stare at you through the camera, they stare at the camera right next to it, they also stare into your soul just from the outskirts of your office. Whether it be from the door or a window that you aren't able to close. Anyone scared of being stared at will surely get their money's worth of scares from any FNAF game. 
Ow. And at four, cyberphobia. Cyberphobia is the fear of computers and tech. So, in the world of FNAF, where the technology is incredibly advanced for its time, in a game that's supposed to take place like 10 years in the future, yeah, that would be a cause for concern. I mean, there are animatronics free roaming with their own personalities. There are giant holographic projections of these characters on their stage. There is only one human worker the entire time that we're there. A man became sentient code and was transferred back to his once living body that was replaced with machinery after a spring locking incident. I mean, the technology in these games is incredibly advanced. Even going as far back as 1983 in FNAF 4 or 1987 in FNAF 2 where they had facial recognition technology. And to make matters even worse, the tech that you should be able to wrap your head around doesn't work like it should. And yes, I'm talking about those goddamn doors! Animatronics with their own special AI that gives them their own personalities that make them self-conscious or pizza-loving is one thing. But doors that operate the opposite way that they're supposed to is a whole other issue that already terrifies me, and I don't even have this fear. In a 10, Arachibutyrophobia. Now, there isn't really any evidence to this since this fear is so incredibly odd, but since it's so odd and I won't really have another place to talk about this, Arachibutyrophobia is the fear of having peanut butter stuck to the roof of your mouth. Not the fear of peanut butter, like you don't even have to be allergic, just the idea of peanut butter being stuck to the roof of your mouth is chilling for whatever reason. And it's totally possible that William Afton might have had this phobia, but we can never really be certain, okay? It's just, it's interesting to, to consider. It, it makes him a little more human, albeit a, a slightly odder one, but I mean this is a phobia for a reason. Maybe because the roof of your mouth is where like your nose connects to your mouth, or something similar. I don't know. <laughs> or maybe it could just be because William is a, is a psychopath. Either rationale works for me. In at nine, a Phoebe phobia. A Phoebe phobia actually is a fear that, in my opinion, makes sense because honestly, teens can be stupid and incredibly annoying. Yeah, that's right. A Phoebeophobia is the fear of teens, which could help explain William's MO, where he chooses to kill kids instead of anyone older. Uh, maybe because he's scared of the older kids and thinks that they could uh, actually overpower him. Or, in reality, maybe they'd end up killing him because, like I said, teens can be quite the severe pain in the ass, or teens can be horrible, especially if they're hanging out at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Like, have you ever seen teens hanging around at Chuck E. Cheese? And if you have, have you ever seen them doing it because they like the establishment? No, they're doing it because they have some nefarious purpose in mind, whether it be vandalism, or to antagonize someone who's working there, or maybe just yelling at some children. Who knows? But they're typically never there because they just want to have fun. In at 9, Gammophobia. Gamophobia is something that I'm getting closer to every single day. What is it you ask? Well, dear viewer, the fear of marriage. Gamophobia is more than just being cautious or somewhat hesitant about making a big commitment. People who have this condition experience intense fear when faced with the reality or even sometimes just the thought of being in a committed relationship or marriage. For some people, negative or traumatic experiences in the past can contribute to an intense fear of commitment. Past relationships can also contribute to the onset of gamophobia. Toxic relationships, previous divorce and infidelity can contribute to a fear of getting too deep into a new relationship, which can actually help explain one of the most curious parts of the series, Ballora. We don't know if William was ever married. We don't even know if these kids are biologically his, meaning that he could have adopted or straight up kidnapped Michael, Elizabeth, and Crying Child. So, a fear of marriage or commitment could explain why he created Ballora, so the kids would have a mother without William needing to commit, whether it be due to childhood trauma or a previous relationship. But considering that he's a serial killer, I'm gonna go with a childhood trauma. And it's 7, Xanthophobia. While I originally talked about this in the Games That Will Trigger Weird Phobias and Phobias FNAF Will Trigger Videos, I was referring to a game called Yellow in the first one, and then Chica specifically. I can't use Chica as an example this time around because, well, she actually isn't yellow anymore. Now she's a white chicken, which seems to be more realistic, because like I haven't really seen any pure yellow chickens. Well, a grown chicken. 
scenes at least. However, while Chica may not be yellow, there is still plenty of yellow around the Pizzaplex, with a giant golden Glamrock Freddy statue, the wet floor signs being yellow, as well as also being seemingly sentient, N not to mention the plethora of places that there is yellow around the Pizzaplex in signs or in decorations. There is plenty of yellow in Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex, so those with a fear of yellow will have an interesting time playing this, or basically any other game unless it's in black and white. See, this begs the question, how do you operate in day-to-day -day life if you're scared of a primary color? Like, I'm not making fun of anyone, I just, I want to know how people do it. It seems impossible to me. And at six, autophobia. The fear of being alone is known as autophobia, which is also a way to help remember that autobiography is one written by the subject of the book. However, William having a fear of being alone could explain a lot of the series. I mean, this man ends up creating a surrogate wife animatronic, has three kids despite not seemingly wanting them around until he can't have them around anymore, and then loses those kids and goes berserk. Well, I mean like he, he wanted to and was planning on killing before they died, but then he really goes hard into it after they died. But, it could also explain why he tasks Michael with going to find his sister's possessed robot while he's supposed to be trapped in a room alone, because interacting with his only son, in any form I guess, could help with this fear. It could also be that his multiple personalities all keep each other company, since I'm sure every single one of them is a killer if he has multiple, just because it's William, so of course they all would be. Halfway through into number 5, Phonophobia. Phonophobia is the fear of large sounds, which probably sucks because I feel like me saying phonophobia was pretty loud. Which is also going to suck with the jump scares though. However, via some reports, this also constitutes a fear of voices at times. Which will also suck considering how there is a lot of voice acting in this game. Including voices without people connected to them, since Vanny really shows up on monitors more than she actually appears physically in the game. It's a whole deal that honestly they should have sorted out better, but either way, phonophobia is really going to cause this game to be unplayable in a sense, even more so than the fear of doors, since after all, the game relies on loud sounds to jump scare you. With the game muted, it's not scary, so you just end up being tortured with loud sounds and voices that phonophobia is only going to make worse. And at 4, Panphobia. While phobias usually refer to specific fears, like ablutophobia being the fear of bathing, sometimes fears are more general, like chromophobia being the fear of colors. But panophobia is the fear of everything. Basically, In a way, it's the fear of a vague and persistent unknown evil. And this, while a bit intense, could explain why William had a psychotic break. The fear that something evil was lurking around every corner, yeah, that's a pretty rough one. And would definitely cause some damage. Maybe even enough damage that he thought that he would have to protect himself. I mean, children can literally be the worst humans on earth, so I understand his target market on that front. Like, I wouldn't be able to do those things, I'm just saying that like I, I think that maybe William thinks that he's trying to do God's work by eliminating those that he sees as evil. 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 Yeah, I meant evil. And this phobia would help explain that quite a lot. The tree pyrophobia. Look, I literally have the opposite of this fear because I love fire. But those with pyrophobia are terrified of fire. I mean, fire is a fair fear, considering how it can destroy everything, and if left uncontrolled, it will ruin the universe and everything in it. Kind of like FNAF. But in all honesty, while fire may not be directly in the game, if you play Pizzeria Simulator or hell, even FNAF 3, this fear will be triggered. Considering how at the end of both of these games, the establishment you work at goes up in flames in an attempt to destroy the remnant that contains the souls of the damned. It also doesn't help that in FNAF 6, you actually are in the room that's burning, as indicated by the temperature going up in the office. Getting higher and higher as Henry does his final monologue while wishing the souls of the children peace, as well as damning William to hell because, let's be honest, he deserved it. Even if there is that one kid that everyone would like out of the picture, whether it be the other child of your estranged father, the child of the woman you're looking to be with, or Braith from Skyrim, because let's face it, if she was the one who possessed Golden Freddy, William would have been sent to the heavens, and this whole the one you should not have killed thing wouldn't have started. I hate Braith. Also note to my FBI agent, I don't actually plan on killing any kids, but if I did, they would probably deserve it. It's probably a brony. But ultimately, in a number two, Plutophobia. 
I genuinely believe that Afton had to have Plutophobia. Not because he didn't want Pluto to be a planet, but because instead, Plutophobia is the fear of money. And this man made all kinds of horrible business decisions. Killing people in his own restaurant, hiding bodies in the animatronics. I've gone over this in multiple times in multiple videos, but the only way I can explain it is if this guy was just straight up scared of money. It's like the only thing that in my mind mind really makes sense. Like, sure, you wanted to use it as a killing den for your homicidal tendencies, sure, okay, but how about do that? And also have a profitable business, so your children don't feel the need to walk up to robots that you specifically told them not to touch. Or even enough, maybe just enough, to have a babysitter, making sure that they don't do stupid things. like walking up to the animatronics you told them not to, or running off to that place again, or stuff their siblings in animatronic mouths. Did that ever occur to you? Cause, of course it didn't. Cause you must be scared of money. It's the only thing that makes sense. I've solved FNAF. And finally, in at number one, Robophobia. This is literally the phobia this game was made for. Like, sure, it wasn't actually the reason it was made, but seriously, this is this is the perfect fear for these games. While sure, the thought of mannequins can creep anyone out, robophobia is literally the fear of robots, and is surely the bread and butter of not only this series, but William as well. William must hate animatronics with a passion now. Since the victims possessed them, he got springlocked by one, he can only survive by being in one now thanks to his consciousness being sentient code. I mean, it, it's, it's ridiculous. If he isn't scared of robots, it would be a miracle. And I think he kind of deserves to be scared of robots, you know, since he's combined with one. It would make him constantly in horrific terror, which is something that I think we would all love to see. And understandably so. I mean, this is the reason I can't sleep half the time. This guy caused me to think about everything way too goddamn much.